Hey everybody, it's me, Brian Von Vie, the best narrator and voice actor from this part of Ohio. How you doing? I'm actually kind of terrified and excited by today's concept of the stories. Let's hear your stories of DMing done badly. Oh, DMs that are poor at their job, DMs that have no experience or limited experience, or DMs that just straight up are bad. I'm excited to read these, and I hope you are excited to listen in. That being said, if you have a story you'd like to share, do so in the comments below or on our subreddit, r slash Mr. Ripper. Now, I haven't had too many bad DMing experiences, thankfully. This one isn't something RPG horror story worthy. It's mostly just, uh, disappointing. I met a DM through a looking for group Discord. He seemed like a nice enough guy, and his homebrew world was pretty interesting. The players were, uh, <laughs> iffy, but it seemed like this might be a decent game once we sorted that out. Most of the group agreed that one player mm, didn't fit the table, so he was asked to leave. Here's where it went wrong though. And like I said, it didn't even go wrong per se. The problem was it didn't go at all. Session zero for half the group because half the group wasn't available. During this session, the DM did a number of rather uh, unorthodox things. None of them were stranger to me, though, than this guy's absolute obsession with roll tables. Rather than come up with what an NPC did based on his own imagination and the circumstances of the situation, every NPC's actions were decided based on roll tables. NPC failed a perception check, DM would roll on a roll table to see what they'd do. Now this sounds like it might be hmm, okay, but <laughs> it wasn't, because the roll tables have zero context behind them. And therefore, the NPCs were reacting in ways that made very little sense most of the time. It just felt eh, disjointed and weird. And after that session, the DM had a panic attack and canceled the campaign. <laughs> this was one of the weirdest experiences I've ever had in D&D all around, even though the session was overall fun. But it reinforced my bias against trying to look for games in LFG servers, because every single time I tried, those games never made it past the discussion stage. At least this one made it to playing an actual session, so there's that, I guess. This whole campaign or story just sounded like an episode of ER. If you know what ER is, it's a soap opera, and it's just like, wh where did I go wrong? I'm so confused. <laughs> so, my first campaign had me run a rogue called Vale. Things were going more or less fine until we hit level 3, at which time we had to choose a subclass. I picked Soul Knight, because it clicked with me, and I thought it would be cool. DM said sure, but then I can only use one psychic dice per short rest, because uh, it's too powerful and wouldn't be fair to the other players. I argued that it's an official subclass and the DM insisted it was unbalanced and OP. Ah, fine. I said I'll change it to a different subclass, but he said it's too late and that he will figure something out. Uh, it's never going to end well. First session in, level 3 had me roll a nat 1 on a psychic attack, at which time the DM said my character is psychically drained and can't use any more soul knife psychic dice. It was annoying, but eh, whatever. I let the session continue with my character being pretty much the most pathetic one in the party until the next long rest. A couple of days later, I asked the DM to decide whether I could play the subclass as written or let me choose a different one. He said, he's got me. Next session starts and my character got a gift from the big bad evil guy in the form of a psychic Kamehameha beam, which I had to use to zap a Kraken in half. Let me repeat that. He threw a Kraken at a party of level 3 characters, instantly killing an NPC. It was either I use the super beam attack or do nothing and let a TPK happen. Well, of course I use the attack, cracking down with a big hole through it. My character is burned out, again, unable to use any psychic attacks or the <clears throat> psychic arrows he decided to give my character. Basically, I was a level 4 soul knife rogue with nothing but stealth and generic daggers to use while the rest of my party, a cleric, a druid, a warlock, and a barbarian wrecked things up in combat for the rest of the session and the next two sessions. I told the DM I was considering rolling a new character and giving up on this lame one. He said he wanted to play and will wrap up the story arc soon and that he's got me. That's the third time he said that and I don't buy it. 
I was completely detached during the next session, no longer invested in the character, and eh, unable to roll a new one. I just took a back seat and let the other players run the show. The DM then wrapped up his campaign arc and I decided to retire Vale as a character. At least until the following week, dun dun dun, when I got to DM for the first time and returned Vale as an NPC which the party loved, even making her the final villain in my campaign. I joined a Discord server for D&D and made friends with someone who was new to DMing. They were still in college and from the way they talked about others and their general demeanor, I had an inkling they might not make a great DM. When they announced a free from fun pirate campaign though, I decided to give it a try. What does free from fun pirate campaign mean? The five people from the server who joined, it quickly became four, then three, you'll see why, realized that the DM did indeed have an attitude problem. Ooh, fun. Now. I don't mind hastily drawn maps or some fumbling, trying to arrange enemies or story elements. Like not knowing what's in a shop when we ask or asking something random. What does bug me and everyone else was their immature, snarky attitude. Oh, I hate people like that. They would huff and belittle our choices and lazily describe scenes and huff some more when we asked for more details. They openly said they fudged rolls once, and when we were adrift at sea, stuck in ghostly fog, they said, I'm gonna be an ass and do this, and proceeded to roll and make us reset. They tried to make us do ship checks for our specific jobs, and as captain, I did most of them. Way too many rolls for things where an easy you sail here type narration could have been done. At one point, they called another player stupid and or dumb, and were irritated by the uh, fun way they roleplayed their pixie bard. That was session two. I called them out in DMs, explaining their behavior and how inappropriate and ugh, toxic it was. And me being 32, ain't nobody got time for that. Hey, high five, I'm 32. 32, gang. And they seemed to genuinely be upset and apologize. A depression and two week game break later, we had another session and it was ugh, no different. So I left the game, then it dissolved. Keep your attitude in check. The DM I'm in a campaign with right now has made it impossible to kill or even hurt any NPCs. Kind of sounds like Sims 4 to me. He also recently trapped us in a cave entirely filled with mimic rocks. Ugh, that's terrifying. We had three straight sessions of just fighting rocks. It was uh, a lot of rocks. Hopefully you're all dwarves too, cause uh, no dwarf didn't mind banging some rocks. We were level two, have been playing for eight months, and have had eight sessions. Then again, I also rolled high on an animal handling check, and now have a pet green dragon wormling, which I named Alexi. So, eh, upsides and downsides, I guess. Once a DM improvised my backstory on the spot to give me a reason how I got into a specific location. I felt violated at the lack of my character's personality in it and how I couldn't even make choices. I was there for one session. Ah, so many bad memories. I, I kind of like this one already just because like, yeah, it's a bad memory. It's like reminiscing as an old man. I think the worst was when I was playing a female tabaxi monk, Cheshire. Her style was akin to an Arabian dancer with scimitars. That sounds really cool. The DM had a DM PC that was supposed to only help us in the most dire situations, like a coach watching his pupils hunt some beasts. The encounters were pumped to the roof, so the party was always at the verge of death, so the DM PC could appear at the last moment and single-handedly kill all the monsters to save us. The straw that broke the camel's back, however, was when we were supposed to be celebrating, having survived our most recent encounter and the DM made me roll constitution saves. I failed a save, so he nonchalantly told me that my character got so drunk that I woke up next morning naked and in bed with the DM PC. I felt disgusted. Never played with that DM again, and uh, <laughs> I would have uh, uh, said to that DM, listen, buddy, that's not cool. Not only is it not cool, but uh, if you have these like weird fantasies about, you know, uh, a certain word, uh, we're just going to call it struggle snuggling. Maybe you should take yourself and 
fuck off the uh, D&D universe because no nobody wants to play with that kind of garbage. I was recently in a COS campaign. Oh god, is this Curse of Strahd? Warning, alert, Curse of, Str Curse of Strahd spoilers, look out! Hey, pardon me, run by an inexperienced DM. He accidentally allowed the werewolf side questing to go on a little too long and had to homebrew something more to the werewolves beyond just attacking trade routes. He created a werewolf clan where werewolves of a certain infected strain all coexist for the common goal of pestering humanoid trade. When the party finally tracked down the ringleader, a mythical wolf whale called a colt. They got to speak to it through a party member who'd gotten bitten. Cue an exposition straight out of a kid's film that explained everything. No boss fight or puzzle either. He let them roll persuasion on a creature straight out of mythological horror. That DM? Yeah, that was me. I'm going to try to get better at homebrew, but the one that sticks with me was how anticlimactic it was. I should have just kept the creature silent and still in the water until something approached it, where it would swim away like the hauntings of Strahd himself. Hey, you live and learn, and you, in particular, actually called yourself out, so I'm proud of you for that, and don't be too hard on yourself, you're at least trying your best. My DM didn't let me play, but for 15 minutes, because I was a woman. Uh, what? He purposely killed my character and told me to go back to the kitchen and fix some food for the real players. What ass-backwards part of the world do you live in where that's still a thing? You should have kicked him clean in the nuts and slapped him upside the head, walked out of there with your head held high because, uh, eh, little dick energy, hello. A DM I was playing with decided to pick favorites. Oh, I hate these types. Throughout the campaign, he let this other player basically become a god by just handing him whatever he asked for and would take up half the session to uh, focus on this one player. Then this same DM made a dwarf NPC. Because of my backstory, I didn't like dwarves, so when I first met him, I decided to fight him. This dwarf was the same level as us and a cleric, but somehow had infinite spell slots and a crazy high AC. I wasn't planning on killing this NPC, but uh, <laughs> you can't make an NPC invincible just because you don't want it to die. I think this DM just enjoyed playing God a little too much. Also, who could ever hate a dwarf? Come on now, that is sacrilege. Sacrilege! As a player, for me in my first campaign, when I joined in a few sessions late in the campaign, you'd expect that when you start the game with a new player, the DM would, uh, I don't know, have your character be introduced into the game. For mine though, they didn't introduce me, nor tell me to introduce myself. Turns out the DM made it so all the PCs already knew each other, but didn't bother to mention that to me, so I stayed there waiting for like uh, an hour or so, just waiting to be introduced, only to find out once we all had to roll initiative that my character had been with the party all along. Here's how it went. Ooh, a bit of roleplay, I'm excited. <laughs> It'd be nice if I could roll with them. Uh, you are. Oh, what, what? Oh, what? I am? Uh, yeah. Bro, I felt so stupid at that moment. Like, man, I've been sitting here like an idiot. They must think I'm an inactive player. Dang it. But now, I'm pretty sure that's on the DM. I'm still salty about it, but that DM is now better at DMing and was always a nice person. Just inexperienced. After all, that was also their first time DMing. They are still my DM to this day, and I'm glad they are, as they've gotten much better since then. Now this is an example of a damn good story. It started off where you're wondering, this DM is just a dumbass, and then little by little, the DM gets better and better, and you actually become friends and actually have a good time. That is a poor DM growing up and growing older and becoming more experienced. Proud of that DM and glad you stuck around. Hey everybody, Brian Von Vier here, back out again checking in after the vid. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and to ring that bell. Why? Because if you ring that bell, you're going to get notified when we post a brand new video. Wouldn't you like that? Oh my god. So hit the bell, subscribe, like. <laughs> it's like one of those uh, old commercials. Um, also, you can leave a comment down below to uh, tell us your stories on D&D &D or any other TTRPG. We do read it and draw heavily from the comment section. You can also go onto our subreddit, r slash Mr. Ripper, and deposit something there as well.
Now, if you want to come say hi to me, Brian Von VA, you can do so on my website. Link is in the description below. Uh, I do a lot of stuff on Twitch. If you'd like to come say hi, just be like, hello, Brian, you're, you're a narrator. Hi, hello. I'd be like, hi, hello, how are you? Um, and I always try to end things on a positive. And today's no different. I've been, as of well, the past couple days, weeks, I don't know, trying to better myself as a person as much as I can. I've been trying to have healthier friendships, healthier everything. And uh, I've been working out, too. And I want to just say, it, it's it's something that takes a while to do, and you might not succeed at what you're trying to do to better yourself right away, but the whole point of everything in the world is not to worry about how long it takes, just worry about doing it. Do your best. Don't worry about how messy and gross it is at first. It's gonna be. It's gonna be nasty. You're not gonna know what the hell you're doing. It's all about organic growth. You have to organically let yourself become a bigger, brighter, better person. You can't just try to force it. You can't just try to rush it. It takes time, and it will certainly improve. Trust me. I've been there, and you will too. All the love, everybody. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.